Hi guys, Rob from Rob's Model Cars and today's video is something a little bit different. Uh, I've had quite a few requests from subscribers on how I paint my custom model cars. Uh, so I'm going to basically go through and show you what materials I use uh, and then I'll go out to my painting room and paint a custom model that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, now, I'm working on another LB Performance Liberty Walk model. Uh, this is a Ferrari 360 Spider. Uh, I've already done all the custom wheel arch flares out of modelling putty uh, and I've also uh, done all the undercoating on this model with primer as well. Uh, so that's another video that we'll get into in another time. So today's video is purely just how I paint my models. Uh, now I use automotive paints. Uh, now this method is not going to suit everyone. Uh, some of you may uh, want to use uh, spray cans like say Tamiya uh, or a similar product like that. Uh, the painting process is basically the same whether you're going to use spray cans or whether you're going to use automotive paints. The main thing that you want to do is have a nearly dust free area to paint your models. Uh, obviously most of you will know that painting your models, dust is your number one enemy in a nice paint finish on your model. Uh, so we'll run through basically what I use. So uh, for most of my models I use an automotive mini spray gun. Now this is what they call an automotive touch up gun. Uh, it has a 0.8mm nozzle uh, and you do have your fan control. Uh, and your mixture of screws and your air control on the bottom. Uh, so this is why I'll pre-mix all my colors and I'll put them into this mini gun and I will actually uh, spray my models with these mini guns. Now the good thing with automotive paint is that uh, you can get the consistency of the paint perfect for spraying uh, and you don't have it too thick or too thin. So with automotive paints we use these measured mixing cups. Uh, now with all automotive paints, some just require mixing with thinner, some require mixing with hardener, uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, for the finer detail work on some of my models, if I'm painting wheels or little brake calipers, uh, I do use my little airbrush, uh, but for the painting of my model car bodies, I find the airbrush is too finer method of painting. Uh, I like to have uh, a much larger fan pattern when I spray uh, and I've got a bit more control with these guns. Uh, now I have been painting this way for many years so uh, it's not going to suit everyone uh, but this video is to show you how I paint my custom models. Now first thing you want to do uh, is prime your model so whether it just be a repaint or you're doing some custom work like this Liberty Walk model where you're going to make some custom bodywork parts the method is the same. Once you've finished all your sanding and preparation, it's time to prime your model. Uh, now I use a, a, a two-pack uh, high solid surfacer. I use grey or white depending on the finished painted colour. Uh, these require a hardener to be mixed in. Uh, the primers are usually a two to one. So two parts primer, one part hardener and around five to fifteen percent thinner just to thin the mix out a little bit depends what country you're painting in and what your humidity and your temperatures are uh, the hotter it is uh, the more thinner you want to add to that so it'll spray out of the gun uh, correctly and not be too thick uh, once you let that dry for 24 hours i hand sand all the primer uh, 3m make these fantastic sanding sponges now these come in a super fine and an ultra fine um, and these are equivalent to say around 400, 600 grit sandpaper. So once you, you can cut these into smaller pieces because they're just sponges um, and they conform to your fingers. So when you can actually sand these bodies, uh, you don't get any high spots. Uh, they sand the body very, very well. So once these bodies are sanded uh, fully, you have a very, very smooth primer finish. Now this is perfect to get a flawless paint finish out of your spray gun. Now before I actually paint these models in my spray room, uh, I will actually use a wax and grease remover on a rag, a clean rag, uh, and wipe over and get all the residue sanding dust off the model, 
I'll then also use my air blow gun uh, and blow any dust out which, which can get caught underneath these die cast bodies. And then when you actually paint the model, it can unsettle that dust and that can come around and stick in your wet paint. So a good idea to maybe blow uh, air blow gun out all the dust off there, use a wax and grease remover, a wipe over the whole body to take any uh, sanding residue off. Uh, and then before I actually spray colour, uh, I use these automotive tack rags. Uh, now they use these when they paint real cars for exactly the same process. Um, if there's any little dust or debris or any other contaminants on there, these tack rags, uh, which are wiped over the body, will remove any of those contaminants and you will have a perfect uh, surface ready for paint. Now, the fact that I use automotive paints, I can use what's called base coats. Now, they can, any automotive paint store can mix these up into any Ferrari, Lamborghini, or any particular color that you want. The good thing with base coats is that they are a straight 50 to 50 mix. So 50% base coat, 50% thinner, uh, and that gives you the exact consistency to spray out of your spray gun. Uh, but the advantage with base, base coats is that they dry in around 15 minutes. Uh, so you can add multiple coats uh, in the hour. Uh, and if you want to, say, add a pearl coat on top of the colour before you add your clear coat, you can also do that as well. And pearls are exactly the same as base coats. 50% pearl, 50% thinner. Uh, and then you can spray that over your base colour uh, before you apply your clear. Uh, now the pearls dry just as fast, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the humidity in your country. Uh, and that way, if you do have a little error in your painting with the base coat, you can go back with your 3M sanding sponges. And you can actually, if you say get a run somewhere, you can actually rub through that base coat to get rid of the run. And then you can just reapply more base coat color. Uh, that is the advantage with base coat drying so fast. Um, if you used other solvent bases or a, say a two-pack clear, uh, you've got to let those dry for 24 hours other this, otherwise they're still wet underneath uh, and you will have to wait and then sand the model back and start again. So that is one of the advantages with using automotive base coat is the very quick drying time. So once I've painted the model in base coat and I'm happy with the consistency of the colour on the model, I will then do a automotive clear coat over the top. Um, so this is an automotive clear coat. These are like the primer also, uh, where there are two to one. So two parts clear coat, one part hardener, uh, and again, maybe 10, 15% thinner in there, just to thin it out a little bit more. Um, you always use your measuring cups when you're mixing these, and these have the ratios uh, with the lines here. So you can just add your product to the line, mix it up and it's ready to paint. It's a flawless way of painting your models and getting your paint mixtures perfect for spraying. Uh, now, as I said before, if you're using spray cans, it's basically the same process. So you want to prime the body of the model, let that dry, um, then go over it again with the 3M sanding sponges, get the body nice and smooth, uh, and then you can apply your color as well. Now, I used to paint my models years ago with spray cans. The key is to do light passes around 20 centimeters away from the body and pass through. Rather than don't wiggle your can around like this, just do passes and consistently build up your coats. Um, always recommend to people that are new to the hobby, uh, don't try this on an expensive model. Uh, buy a cheap model first, uh, or just try some household objects and try and get your painting technique with your spray can uh, on some cheap things like pots or containers, plastic container, something with a bit of shape so that you can get used to the process of painting. Uh, but this video, this is about how I paint my, vi my model cars uh, with automotive paint. Um, I usually don't buff my models. Uh, I usually get a good enough finish off the spray gun with the clear coat. 
uh, and you've seen some of my custom model series videos of the models I've built. Um, most of them, or nearly all of them, I have not buffed. That is purely the gloss off the clear coat straight out of the automotive touch-up gun. Now, that's pretty much shows you all the products that I use to paint my models. Um, one other thing I will show you is that when I paint all the parts of the models, I make little holders for my parts. So this is just some 20 millimeter timber dowel. Um, I just use some office clips that I screw into the dowel and these can hold parts. This is a door of the model. I've just put a screw through the top so that when I paint them, I can actually hold this a certain distance away from me and I can spray the part underneath, rotate the part around and get a good consistency. Uh, then I have a rack in my spray room that all these pieces fit into a rack. So I can go from piece to piece, pull it out, paint it, put it back and work through my order in my painting room. Uh, I do a similar thing to the body as well. I don't have that fitted here, but I basically uh, mount this to some timber pieces so that I can actually hold the body and I can rotate it and tip it upside down on the top so that when I'm painting, I can get into all edges underneath and get a good coating of paint on there. So that gives you guys a good idea of the products I use and how I paint my model, model pieces and the bodies of the car. So we'll go out now, uh, it's time to paint. I'm gonna go into the spray room. I'll set the camera up in there and I will go through and show you how to layer up the colors uh, and then how to apply a clear coat.